In this episode, I talk with John Hinson of Spotlight Branding about getting the most value from your email list and not letting the people who have engaged with you fall through the cracks. Your email list is a valuable asset, and John will give you some quick tips on getting the most value from your list. You're listening to Espresso Jam, short, concentrated, delicious conversations about business, technology, and entrepreneurship. If you're just starting out on your business adventure or you're a seasoned business professional, I'm sure you'll find value in these short conversations. Espresso Jams is brought to you by Apexable, providing the tools, insights, and transformative structures to help you reach your business summit. I'm your host, Joe Matz. Let's get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Espresso Jams. I have today with me John Henson of Spotlight Branding. He is the editorial director at Spotlight Branding, and we met a few weeks ago, and he has some awesome, awesome stuff to share with us today. We are going to be talking about, well, I'll I'll leave that for John to talk about. We'll talk about that later. Let me welcome John to the show. Hey, John. Hey, Joe. Thanks for having me. Good to see you, man. I'm glad to have you on here. I know a lot of our folks are focused on SEO. And um, we're going to get into that. Before we do, tell us where you hail from this morning. Yeah, we are uh, just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, fantastic. You know, I'm in Raleigh, so we're we're practically new. Okay. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So we're going to talk about SEO, and we're going to talk about SEO in maybe a way that you haven't heard about it before. And so John told me, SEO is not the holy grail of marketing, which, you know, I'm kind of surprised to hear. Um, I hear a lot about SEO and why. So let's talk about that, John. How, yeah. why do you come up with that, that uh, phrase there? That, that's pretty exciting yeah. and pretty new. Yeah. So, I mean, for, for many years, honestly, I mean, since search engines became kind of just a daily habit with how we find information online, you know, a lot of marketing companies have just lasered in, centered in on that as just being how you market your business. And, and regardless of what industry you're in. Um, and there's there's two kind of kinds of issues with that. First, is that a lot for whatever reason, marketing companies have kind of gone on this focus where they're only concerned about you know, getting cold leads or getting, you know, leads at the top of the funnel. If, you know, if you've heard that sort of phrasing before, you know, it's, it's all about, it's all about just kind of getting as many people in and growing that audience and all of that. But what has become ignored is the audience and the network that you already have, you know, and kind of conversely with that, um, a lot of times, you know, people will do these big marketing campaigns, they'll get a bunch of leads, And then once they kind of go through the funnel, they get forgotten about, right? And so there's this whole world of marketing that should be happening for anybody's business that's generally not happening. And it's that that focus on continuing to nurture and market to your existing audience. And there's a lot of studies out there. It's it's more cost effective to market to your existing audience. Like it's like five times more expensive to generate cold leads than it is to market to your existing audience. But if you're in an industry where referrals are huge, so we work primarily with lawyers, uh, financial advisors, CPAs, stuff like that. Referrals are huge in those industries. Um, and a lot of times, businesses like that are missing out on those referrals just because they're not keeping in touch. They're not marketing to that existing audience. And so that's, that's kind of the big area where uh, marketing companies have kind of led people astray is because they've been focused on SEO and, and cold lead generation, and they've been ignoring this audience that they've built up over time. Okay. And you mentioned funnels. Um, yeah. We have some new folks here listening that are very new to business. Could you explain a funnel and maybe what the top of the funnel is? Yeah. So when we talk about marketing funnels, imagine in your head, like a literal funnel, you know, you've seen it. Maybe you put one in your car when you're changing your oil, whatever it is. All right. Um, In marketing, it kind of works the same way. The top of the funnel is where 
the coldest leads are. It's people who, oh, I've just heard about this business. What, you know, they know what you do. They know where you're located. That's pretty much about it. They have no real interest in buying yet. They may need your service, but they're not even remotely close to a buying decision yet. So that's where, you know, your things like your paid ads, your SEO, stuff like that. That's where they get cold leads. That's where they put those cold leads. Over time, with um, follow-up sequences, whether it's an email campaign, whether it's direct mail, um, maybe you have your in-house people make a series of phone calls, whatever the case is. All of those additional follow-ups are designed to take people from the top of the funnel and move them down to the bottom of the funnel. And as they move down towards the bottom of the funnel, they get warmer until they reach the bottom of the funnel. And ideally, they are then considered a hot lead where they are making a buying decision. And hopefully they say, yes, I would like to work with you or yes, I'm going to buy your product. Okay. And so what we're talking about now with your, I guess we're talking about warm leads. Might we consider mm -hmm. them in the middle of the funnel if they're referral? Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, this could be anywhere in the funnel, you know, so like what we've done at Spotlight Branding, we've developed something called a content loop. And the reason is because kind of like what I said before, you run this marketing campaign and you get all of these people in your funnel. When the campaign ends, people are going to be in various parts of your funnel. Some will be really cold because they came in maybe on the last day of the campaign. Some will be down at the very bottom. Some will have already gone through it and they've made a hiring decision one way or the other. And regardless of where those people are in the funnel, the mistake that businesses are making, and this is kind of where we've planted our flag, is that businesses then just don't keep in touch with them anymore. It's like, oh, the marketing campaign's over. We've got all these. All right, let's move on to the next thing. And wow. now we're bringing in a whole new batch of cold leads. And all those leads that have expressed an interest of some level, and it might be very little interest if they're at the top of the level, at the top of the funnel, and then the interest grows as they go through that funnel, they are just kind of thrown out and forgotten about and never contacted again. Is That's what you're saying right. is the problem. Yeah, pretty that much. That sounds I mean, like a the, problem. It is. And and generally, like, you'll still have their contact information. They'll still right. be in your, in your CRM or whatever program that you use. And you'll just have all of this contact information. And a lot of businesses don't realize they have just a really valuable list already in their possession. They don't need to go spend thousands and thousands of dollars every month on lead generation when they have this gold mine right in front of them. And that then begs the question, you know, well, what do you do with it? And that's why, you know, I mentioned before, it's why we have what we call the content loop. Because what that loop does is it essentially moves people through the funnel and then recycles them back through it. And it never ends. And, it, and it's done with just never ending touch points, you know, lots of content, educational content, informative content, you know, content that's designed to show people that you're the expert that they want to work with, that um, you know what they're going through, that you understand their needs and their situations. And so that's then how you solve that problem and, and do so at a much more cost effective rate. Okay. So we learn in marketing that not everyone is a now buyer, right? which I would continue to say uh, most people that they're in your funnel at all, they have an interest in what you're doing, are potential future buyers. Mm -hmm. And I, I really love that you have a system to keep in contact with those potential future um, contacts, potential future clients, because you've already spent the money to get them in your funnel. Yeah. You probably have a CRM that allows you to do many, many more emails than you're doing in a month anyway. Why not? Why are people not nurturing that list? I, I, we have been searching for the answer to that question <laughs> for a really long time. We don't I, know. I mean, it could be a ton of different <laughs> things. Yeah, it could be a ton of different things. I mean, it's, it's one, it's going, it's trying to re-educate people on what they've thought about marketing for a really long time. And that's tough to do, especially, you know, as we get older, we get really set in our ways. No one's going to change our mind about anything. And then all of a sudden you got these people coming along and be like, no, you're doing it all wrong. 
or at least there's this huge area that you're missing. And people might be hesitant to that. Also, you know, especially in this age of the internet, when we talk about content marketing, I think sometimes people, you know, sort of associate that with like being an influencer or doing silly dances on social media all the time. And that's not what it is at all. That's, a, that's, that's one aspect of one it. Aspect. That's one way you can approach it. Sure. That's what, yeah. But it's not what you have to do. You know, Thank it's God. simply put. Thank God for that. Right. Because I don't <laughs> yes, do that. Really. <laughs> exactly. Me neither. Um, but all it takes. And, and the other thing is that it seems so shockingly simple that I think some people just don't think it's one of those too good to be true sort of things. And I don't like that phrasing, especially in marketing, because it sounds very uh, gimmicky, yeah. but it's really not. All you have to do is stay in touch with people. And that can be as much as one time a month, you write a blog article and you put that in an email and you send that email out. That's it. So right. You can, you can be, you can have presence on social media, you can do videos, you can do all of that to add on to it to make it more effective. But if you have a blog article, just surface level, you know, uh, surface level explanation of what you do, how you help a concept, something that keeps your audience up at night, addresses their, their worries. You put that in an email newsletter, you send it out. And now you're able to start generating more consistent referrals and, and business, whether it's repeat business or referrals from that audience that had just been stagnating for God knows how long. Right. And I, I think uh, business folks should be looking at their list as an asset. Yeah. That has value. And yeah. how, would I be correct in saying how much value that list has depends on how you nurture that list? Mm -hmm. So you could have yeah, a, a list that has a, a great potential value, but you're not nurturing it. Mm -hmm. Or you can have a list that has that great potential value and you're nurturing it that can turn into future clients, real value as in clients coming in, money coming in. Right, exactly. And I'll kind of, I'll, I'll bring it back to the SEO discussion because that's that's what we uh, promoted up, up at the front. And I, we've kind of gone off on this, okay. on this tangent. So I apologize for that. But this is how it compares, all right? Let's say you have even just 500 people on your list, all right? It's 500 people who already know about your business, all right? If you keep in touch with them on a regular basis, they're going to become more familiar with your business. If a lot of those names are past clients and you've done a good job for them, now you have ambassadors for your business and you're reminding them so that they think of you first when they're out to refer people. On the other hand, if you're doing something like SEO, and you're trying to get a bunch of cold leads, all right? Think about this, all right? Uh, assuming you're in front of your computer right now, uh, if you're driving, don't do this, but open up your browser, all right? Go to Google and type in, you know, whatever industry that you're in. So let's say uh, CPA near me, all right? The first 10 results, all right? There's gonna be the Google ads, that's a different thing. Then you have your map listings, that's a different thing. The SEO, where the SEO is going to aim to provide benefit are those next 10 listings right there on the first page. And it'll probably give you a billion pages, literally. Um, people, when they're making those searches, generally only care about what shows up on page one. But here's the thing, of those 10 results, a, roughly half of them are gonna be directories and review sites. So now, now you're down to five results. You and every other business in your city who does what you do is competing for basically five spots on page one of Google. And if you're in a huge city, we're in Charlotte, we're one of the bigger cities, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to have to pay thousands, multiple thousands of dollars every month for right. the hope that you can get on page one. Right. And that can fluctuate at, an, at a moment's notice if Google ever changes their algorithms or if, you know, someone starts spending more money and does more aggressive SEO and you can fall off and then all of that money is gone, right? right. So it's really a gamble. And that's why we've been on this kind of crusade where it's like, you don't actually have to do that. Most marketing companies out there will be like, yeah, you need to do SEO, 100%. This is what we do. This is our offering. This is how much you pay for it. But you don't actually need to do it. You can focus on your existing audience and get, just as much value, if not more, for a fraction of the cost. 
because people who have already expressed an interest, they're already at, at a higher level than someone who is doing a yes. Google search. And I thought yes. of something while you were talking, John, it sounds like having these folks on your email list and sending them an email that falls into their inbox, that's almost mm -hmm. like being on page one. Yeah. You got their attention exactly. right there. Exactly. If not more, if not better, because, you know, people are going to be in their email more often than they're going to be on Google. More than likely. We're on Google a lot, but <laughs> I think it's, I think it's still, you know, uh, shifts towards emails favor. Um, yeah. But and, and here's the thing, and, and I and I get the concerns. One, you're not going to annoy your list, all right? One email a month, even one email every two weeks or every email a week. Like we send an email once a week. We get maybe 15 or 20 unsubscribes, and our list is like 12,000 names. We're not hurting by losing those 15 names, all right? Because, you know, they just weren't interested, and that's fine. You're not going to, you know you shouldn't expect to have a 100% success rate in any sort of marketing that you do. Right, right. But, um, but those people, to your point, yeah, they're, they're already familiar. They're more or less fans of your business, supporters of your business in some way. So even if, but even if they don't open that email, seeing the subject line, seeing your name is going to remind them of who you are, what you're doing. Because I, because I tell this to, uh, yeah, and I tell this to people a lot. We live in this huge content age where we're bombarded with just all kinds of stuff. You know, eat this, wear this, you know, try this new thing, all, watch this new show. It's, it's easy to be forgotten, regardless of how good of a job you do. So that's why it's really important to stay in touch because when it comes time for people to refer business to you or make another purchase, they're going to be more likely to remember you and come back to you rather than going somewhere else. Right, because your name is out there. Your name is in yes. their mind. You're reminding yourself. You're reminding them exactly. of yourself. And I like the idea of, of one every two weeks or, or one a month because you don't want to saturate and annoy and bombard their mm -hmm. email. But I have a question, right. John. Now you're, you're sending yeah. emails. So what is the, the content of these emails and, and general perspective of part of the question? The other part is what kind of an email from a technical standpoint? And I mean, Five paragraphs, 500 words, a bullet list, a short email, a very long email. What, what's the best thing to do there? Yeah, so our whole strategy, um, it's around an email newsletter. So um, if you receive a print newsletter, you know, or a newsletter in the mail from someone, it kind of works the same way. But um, our newsletters typically have two or three sections, all right? You have a section at the top, kind of an introduction, like, hey, thanks for opening our email. Uh, this is what we're covering this month. Maybe you've got some announcements. Maybe your business did something cool that you want to brag about a little bit. That's great. Cool. Add that in there. But your main feature, you know, the featured content should be either a video or a blog addressing some sort of common concern. You know, especially if you're in the professional services industry, regardless of whatever it is, home services, finance, legal, whatever it is, that kind of content should be the focus of your newsletter. And the title of that content should be the subject line, right? Subject line shouldn't be, you know, your business's name, April newsletter. Like, right. right. You know, your business name should be the from like who it's from, but that's it. And then that way people can associate, oh, okay, this is Smith Law Firm. Okay, they're talking about, you know, the the steps I need to take in order to file for divorce in my state or whatever, you know, that and, and that's going to make those connections. So even if that person in that moment isn't thinking about getting a divorce, or maybe they've already gotten a divorce, they remember you, and now they're going to go out and they and think of you first when it's time to talk about it or you know recommend a firm. But to your original question, you know, put in that blog or that video with that featured content. Say surface level, you don't have to get deep into the weeds, but put in a paragraph, a little bit of a teaser, and redirect people back to your website so that people can then get there, read the rest of the article, watch the video, and then explore some more. Maybe they download a resource at that point, maybe they fill out a contact form whatever the case is. Um, the one thing I would say, it's more about what not to put in those emails, right? Make sure that just whatever you're doing 
is specific to what your business does, right? And I'll make a, I'll make a point about it. I, I subscribe to a law firm's newsletter for the sole purpose that I just want it to make me angry every month, which is a weird thing to do. I understand, but it's because every single month their newsletter has absolutely nothing to do with what they are doing as a law firm, right? They have just the most random articles in there that aren't legal related at all. Like, I mean, there's been like uh, today's national Pokemon day. Here's what you do to celebrate, right? Here's, uh, here's a recipe for pumpkin cookies. And it's like, you're not a restaurant, you're a law firm. I'm not going to lawyers to get cookie recipes. Right. So it's, it, it, yeah, just it, keep it, keep it specific to your firm and, and keep all the fluff out. Keep all the fluff out. And it, it sounds like you're almost talking about a, a summary email where it's, it's mentioning something, maybe that's important. Maybe you did something cool and you want to talk about that. Yeah. And then the content almost has a call to action, I heard, that would direct them back to your website. So a little teaser, if you want to know yeah. more kind of kind of question, and then what that yeah. would what you would be learning more about. Right. And keeping yeah, it short. And, and another way to look at it. Yeah, exactly. Another way to look at it, you know, especially kind of what we do, um, you know, when I put together our weekly newsletter that we send out to our list, um, I will put, I'll typically put in like the first paragraph of the blog. And then at the end of the blog, I'll put the three little ellipses. And then we've got a read more button. And that read more button takes people directly to the rest of the article that they can finish reading. I like that. I really like that. Because if I'm not interested, I already know that by reading the first paragraph. And then yeah, I can move exactly. on to what might interest me, maybe below that section in your newsletter. Yeah, exactly. that's great. Yep. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spring a question on you here. You talk okay. about a content loop. Why yeah. did you use the word loop? Yeah, because um, it, unlike that funnel that we talked about earlier in the show, loops never end, all right? Your funnel is going to have a start and an end point. It's going to have that entry point, and it's going to have that decision point at the very bottom. That loop, that loop is not ending, all right? Unless you take yourself out of it. Okay, right? that's great. And that's fine if you do. That's an awesome yeah. answer for a spur of the moment question. I thought I was going to get you on that one, John. No, <laughs> not at all. All right. I like the loop function. I like, um, I mean, you should contact it. You're not bombarding. You're not disturbing two emails a month, maybe one a month. And um, it's, it's keeping that going until they tell you they don't want to hear from you anymore. And right. it's an easy unsubscribe um, button at the end of the email for, as per legislation, you have the unsubscribe button. Yeah, exactly. Makes it easy. Makes yeah. it real easy. Exactly. John, yeah. This, and, this, and, you know, okay. and one last point, and you can make your loop as robust or as bare bones as you want, but you need to do something. And the blog in the newsletter or the video in the newsletter is key. You can add on to that social media, a podcast. A podcast is a great way to, uh, you know, show off that expertise, kind of nurture those referral relationships, whatever the case may be. Um, your website is going to be part of your content loop. Um, and, and just, yeah, anything that has to do with you showing off your expertise and making those consistent touch points with your audience is all going to be part of your content loop. And it's really easy to create. Yeah, that's great. John, I appreciate your generosity in sharing this. I have learned so much and I, I sure hope our audience has. I'm sure they have. Um, but before we go, what is yeah. one actionable step that we can leave the audience with today? Man, just just make some content, all right? Uh, write a blog and put it in an email and send it out to your audience. And you're going to be surprised the kind of feedback that you're going to get. Um, we have clients of ours who tell us that every time they send out their monthly newsletter, they get multiple referrals or requests for repeat business, all right? And you have no idea just what kind of uh, business and revenue you're leaving on the table by just not keeping in touch. Um, there was a study done by uh, Texas Tech uh, a few years ago that found that 80% of people are willing to refer business to you, but only about 30% actually do. So that means that you've got an opportunity right now 
to double the number of referrals that your business gets and you're still not maxing out. And the way to do that is just by te- by staying in touch. That's all you got to do. So staying just a, in touch. A, I think that's a, a short word. blog article and an email. Yeah, exactly. Keyword, stay in touch. Very good. And if w- some of our listeners want more, John, how do they get in touch yeah. with you? Yeah. So uh, if you want to just brush up on your marketing, on your content marketing, uh, I invite all of you to check out Spotlight Insider. It is our media website. We have a article, a new piece of content going up every single day of the week, uh, podcast videos, articles, whatever the case is, just on marketing, tech, uh, strategy, personal development, mental health, money and metrics, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, It's designed for business owners. Um, It's primarily to our audience of lawyers and financial advisors, but even if you're not in that industry, uh, I think you'll still get a ton of value out of it. So uh, spotlightinsider.com is the URL. And then uh, if anybody just has any questions about marketing in general and, and content marketing, uh, feel free to reach out to me personally. Uh, my email is john, J-O-H-N at spotlightbranding.com. Okay, John, that all of that information, if you're watching the video, maybe on YouTube or a website, that information will be down below. You've already seen it. If you're not, if you're listening to the podcast, that information will be in the show notes. Keep it easy. Very good. John, it has been fantastic talking with you today. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. I really appreciate you having me on. Bye now. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Espresso Jams. If you like what you heard, please subscribe on your preferred channel. Never miss another episode. If you'd like more business tips on technology, entrepreneurship, and doing better, you can find me on LinkedIn at Joe Matz, that's J O E. M-A-T-Z, or go to my website, apexable.com. That's apex-able.com. I'm your host, Joe Matz, wishing you an awesome day.